Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today we are making a face flannel and yes this does not look the same like the ones that were all the rage a couple of years ago where we were making discs and using those to wash our face with. Now I found those not so handy because you had the little disc on your fingers and you were washing and it just slid off so I didn't stick with them for long I'm afraid but ever since I have been trying to come up with something that would be useful to me or that I would be able to use without many problems so I have designed this so it's a mini face flannel you put your fingers in and that's enough to be able to wash your face so on this side I then put the water put some soap and I wash my face and then if I'm careful, I turn around my hand inside my little mitt here and I have a dry side to dry my face. And I can just throw this in the wash, wash it and have a clean and hygienic face mitt again every day. So I have made this one and I tried it and I loved using it. It's so much easier than those face pads that were always falling on the floor for me. So I am now making them in all kinds of colors and I hope you will join me in making these too. Now for this project, it is very important that you actually use 100% cotton. You need it to be uh, soft, you need it to absorb water and soap so that when you are using it, you've got that soap there and that water. Then when you're drying your face, you need it to absorb the water and also you need to be able to wash it of course in your uh, washing machine and I have actually dried mine in my dryer and doing both will uh, sanitize and disinfect things as well so you need to be able to wash this without any problems um, these are unwashed this one has been used and washed. So I wanted to obviously trial this out. I wanted to make one, use it a couple of times, wash it a couple of times and then see what it looks like. And I have to say, this one feels quite hard. This one is so much softer. So after a few washes, it becomes even more um, nice, even more soft to use it. And uh, yeah, I think it's really worth having these. So... 100% uh, cotton is very important in this case and so this is the King Cole cotton soft that I am using. It is 100% cotton. Um, I'm using lots of these yummy pastel colours. We have them on our website. We have the whole range so you can go and choose the colours that you like. Uh, this is prescribed for a 4mm hook. It's a DK thickness but as usual, I will be using my three and a half to obtain a nice, a nice weave here. So it's not too loose, it's not too tight either. It's okay if there's a little bit of holes like this one. I don't know whether you can see that you can see through it slightly, but that's fine because obviously that makes it easier for you to use. And I like the size of this because it fits nicely around my fingers like this. You also need a darning needle just to sew in the ends and of course you need scissors as well to cut off the yarn. So let's get started. I have my slip knot here. Insert the hook, three and a half for me. Could be a four for you. And we are going to chain 16. So one, two, three, four, five, 15 and 16. This last chain is going to be our turning chain so you sort of bring that up like that and then you're going to do your first single crochet into the second chain there. So I always pick up the one strand there, the V behind and I do a single crochet. So this is going to be our last V that we have to go into when we come back. So if you want to, you can mark that one with a stitch marker. And then you are going to be placing a single crochet in each chain along the chain. 
So that means you will be doing 15 single crochets. So when you get to the last chain, it's always a little bit difficult there. It needs a little bit more persuasion. <laughs> there we go. So I have now done my 15 single crochets. I'm going to chain one. You turn your work, look down towards the V. This is my chain one. This one here is the first stitch that I need to use. Go under the V of that stitch and you start doing your single crochets again. And basically you work your way to the end of the row. So here I'm at the end of the row. Don't forget to do that last stitch there. Under the V and we do a chain one. We turn, use that very first stitch in the row below, leaving the turning chain just hanging there. And yeah, it's an easy project to be honest. So let me continue doing my rows here. So now you are going to continue like this until you have done 18 rows. So make sure you tick them off and in the end you should have a nice little square. So I now have here my rows done and I am just doing the last few stitches of my 18th row. So now my square is a nice little square. So if you can fold it into a triangle like this and the edges meet like this, then you know it's a square. So now for my next row, I am going to do exactly the same. So chain one, turn, but then I am going to be working in the front loop only. So you pick up the front loop. Let me show you better. So you look at the V and there is the back loop. This is the front loop. So here you're just going to pick up the front loop. Well, before we were just going under, let me show you under the both strands there. So this time, just this one here and you do your row. And this will allow us to come back on ourselves with our second panel that we are making. So we don't need to adhere the panels. They are together at the base. We do have to adhere them on the sides, but at least they're already together on the base. So let me just show you what it should look like. So here's my last stitch. There we go. So on this side it looks like this, but on this side you have a little line there. And this will allow us now to just, you know, fold over our panels quite easily. So now we are going to do another 17 rows because of course we need to do exactly the same amount as we did on the other side or in our first part here. So tick them off again onto your list and I will see you when you have done all your rows. And of course we are working under the two strands of the V again. Nearly there. So I have now done 18 little rows here as well. When you fold it with this line on the outside, it lines up really nicely. Look at that. See, there we go. So now we are going to just crochet this part here together. So holding them together, just using the same loop as we ended with you're going to do a chain one and then you are just going to have to find a sensible strand on this panel here and then another one on this panel there 
to go under and do your single crochet. So not too far apart, not too close together. Find a nice strand. Maybe, yeah, this one here. Oh, can I get under there? Can I get under that one? And just find the locations to put your single crochets. And you're not going to see this because you're going to be, this is going to be on the inside, but try not to sort of pick up whole things like this. I've just tried, I can't find anything sensible here, twisting your hook and just trying to get, yeah, it's going to have to be that one, I think, unless I can. And just trying to find, um, I am doing my best here. <laughs> there we go, look at that. So that's a little bit less than that whole bit that I found there. There we go. You won't see these single crochets because they're going to be uh, on the inside of your um, little mitten here. But um, don't go too deep because then you know you will see on the outside that you've done something there. So it needs to just be nice on the edge. Oh, that split a little bit there. And, you know, this might take a little bit of time, but again, you'll get used to it. You'll see the locations better and better. See it like this. Okay, so then when you have it, let me just pull this up. When you have it like this, it just looks like this and that's fine. Okay, so let me continue to the end and I will start the other side together with you. So I just did the last single crochet there and you cut off the yarn and pull out the loop like this. And of course you'll have to just sew in the ends. Then of course on this side here, I'm making my slip knot insert the hook and I'm going to get started on this end here so near the base so once again trying to find those strands and do your single crochet I will meet you at the top so here all I need to do is just one more single crochet sort of really at the top there yeah there we go and now i'm going to do a chain of 15 so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen and fifteen and then you go back to oh it's twirled around you go back to that last single crochet that you did and what I tended to do was go in, bring the yarn through and then just do a slip stitch. Just let's see if, yeah, there we go. And then you cut off your yarn. You pull it through and you'll have to sew in this end. And as you can see, I have sewn in all my other ends already as well. And then when you've sewn in your ends, you turn it inside out, there we go. And we have another wash mitt to add to my collection. The loop here I do use to hang them up, to dry them out before I wash them. And also one last thing, I do not use fabric conditioner, I use vinegar instead of normal fabric conditioner. And uh, this will allow my face pads, the cotton, to be super absorbent of what I want them to be. And I mean, you could make these for all the family members and have different colors for each. They hardly take any yarn at all to make. 15 grams is all you need, so you can make quite a few from one ball. In fact, you can make about six from each ball of 100 grams. Now, in the meantime, I have been obsessed with making these little face flannels. Now, I have to say they 
I can make about three in an evening, so easy to make. And I've decided to make this little rainbow of colors. I've used apricot, lemon, apple, mint, and iris, but yes, I am using them as little face mitts. But to be honest, there's so many other things you could use them for. Imagine you could use this for an advent calendar. Make the amount you need, put the numbers on them and hang them up. And you've got a little pocket to put little presents in. Or even as a gift card holder or a small gift, put some money in this, give this as a gift. And they've got a face pad as well i mean how adorable so yes i am very happy with my collection i can't wait to start using them let me know in the comments box down below what you would use yours for so we can inspire each other to use these little pouches for all kinds of interesting things but i find them really handy for my personal use for washing my face for sort of having a hygienic um, in a piece of cotton cotton cloth to wash my face with so I hope you will enjoy making these for you know make these for selling at craft fairs I think they would be quite a popular item so thank you for watching this video I hope you will have a go at making these and I will see you in the next video bye